Hi everyone. Um, I got a comment that said, uh, could you please do what you did for the Gentleman War box uh, with the Perry Miniatures box set of Desert Brits, the Desert Rat box set. And I love this comment because somebody has been noticing I am a Perry fanboy. My whole collection of British, and I have a not a large collection. I'm I'm mainly I I I collect other stuff. Right, my uh, my infamous collection of of Saga Normans is growing quite rapidly, and um, you know, my my Saga Normans. Right, um, so I I basically this is what I enjoy painting. Um, I really like I, I enjoy painting horses and um, and armor and mm, love it. I also have a, a large collection of Napoleonics. Um, I have a, a large collection of Bavarian Napoleonics. I have some Danes as well and um, and a, a collection of Russians and so yeah, that's why I enjoy painting. But I do have a collection of game pieces for Bold Action, which is my main competitive game, right? Um, and um, for that, I'm only using Perry's. I love Perry's. Um, it's it's just oh, I love that box set. It's it's so versatile. You can build almost anything with it. Um, I wanted to showcase to you what I have built just using Perry Miniatures box set and a little bit of bit box uh, bits box uh, from other stuff and I will mention what I've, I've got the different parts from right but just going off the box set itself I, I built my my whole uh, army of desert Brits right this is this is a rifleman um, and because I knew that I was going to I, I wanted to have my my Brits here be um, Commonwealth forces of some kind. I painted them brown in the skin tones, right? Um, I'm colorblind, um, so my coloration is pretty much like paint by the numbers, um, but I hope that this is a sort of mm, brownish, so not, not like African brown, but maybe Indian brown-ish. Um, that's what I was going for. Indian brown in the sun, basically. Um, so all my Brits are this Indian brown, unless there's a specific reason for them not to be. So my officers, for instance, they're often white because Commonwealth imperialistic bastards and stuff, right? So this is a rifleman, and these you can build straight out the box. Um, the box comes with lots of different assemblies of different weapons, and they're very, very easy to assemble. There's no like uh, individual weapons. The weapons are all attached to arms. So that is easy. Some of them are even attached to two arms so that they fit on the torso. Love that. I hate the fiddly bits that you sometimes get with Warlord uh, kits. Love these guys. Um, so many of them are just built like this. Um, from the box, I also built all my officers. Um, to distinguish them from the regular dudes, I gave them all uh, double weapons. And then I made sure they, they have a little bit of... Uh, uh, I don't know if you can see that. He has stripes on his shoulder. Anyways, so all my officers have two weapons, or are holding two things, anyways. So, and then they have something on their shoulders. Of course, my lieutenants have cabs and stuff. Um, so, um, so, and and that's all built from the box as well. I just, I, I, for this one. One guy, I added up two different arms. One of them is from uh, the pistol is from an officer, and and the uh, the other arm is just from an infantryman. Um, two weapons, and then I know it's an officer. Um, I do the same with my NCOs, by the way. Two weapons, I know it's the NCO. Um, just an easy way to mark it. But from that box set, still using only the box set, I've also made a uh, quite a number of SAS troops. Long range desert group troops. Um, these guys were built with a one addition, and they that's that's a little bit of a cheat. I said I built this from the box. You can build these from the box, right? There's heads that come uh, with the box, there are 
uh, SMGs, you can build them with rifles or Bren guns, whatever. Um, basically, all the troops can get this uh, long range desert look. Um, you can also get them with different, like, North African and Arab headdresses and stuff. Um, I cheated a little bit and gave this guy a uh, an American backpack because I wanted them to have this sort of feeling of you know of of having their own kit and and maybe having stolen a bit of it. So I I, I didn't want to give them the same kit that the rest of my army has. So they got all kinds of different stuff. Some of them got German backpacks or little bits of extra gear uh, attached to them. Um, but you can build them clean out the box without any additions. Then you can go a little bit further, um, and uh, and you can you can do some cutting and and some and then you can build yourself some uh, special troops. This is my artillery observer, um, and I built him. Use he's holding a pair of binoculars. You can see that, right? And an SMG because I wanted. I knew already that I wanted my my artillery observer to always have an SMG. Um, he's equipped as shown per the model, so. I'm, wanted of course to have the the most use out of him and then just to mark him as the observer I, I gave him the an officer's cap and I gave him a pair of binoculars and the binoculars were actually made using uh, a little bit of the kit from the box there is a uh, an ammo pack for uh, oh, what's it for maybe the light mortar in the pack I think and I cut that up because it had two tubes running right alongside each other and him holding those two tubes in his hand looks just like a pair of binoculars. Right. So that is my artillery observer. Then I got ambitious again with a pack here. And I uh, I built myself two flamethrowers. Um, they don't come in the pack. And, and at some point I, I wanted them. Uh, I wanted a flamethrower team or maybe some engineers, I thought. So I built two. Um, these were pretty simple. Uh, they don't... Ah, they don't look exactly like the flamethrowers that the Brits used. It's a little bit oversized and a little, little bit chunky, but it's good enough when you see it on the table. It does have the, the round thing here. That was built with a little bit of uh, putty and a, a bead. Just a bead in the center, just pushed it down, and there we go. A little bit of wiring, and then I have a flamethrower. Um, very simple kit. None of it was kit bashing. It was all just stuff I had laying around. Um, love my frame for us. I got two of these. Um, then I got into a little bit of kit bashing uh, because at some point I wanted some Gurkhas and I didn't want to go and buy Warlord Games Gurkhas because they would look weird next to all my nice Perry miniature sized Gurkhas. So what I did instead was I was building at that time, I was building out my uh, ancient Greeks. I have an, an army of ancient Greeks and uh, an army of, well, I have several ancient armies, actually. My largest army is a Carthaginian one. Anyways, I was building that. And in that pack, there was a lot of uh, swords, ancient swords, that looked just like the cookeries. Nice, I thought. I cut out a few of those of the sprue. And I used the hands on my troops. I gave them the knife, the cookery knife of the Gurkhas. You can see? Um, that knife, nobody can see, nobody can tell the difference. Yes, it's not as bendy as the cookeries. It's the same knife, basically. It's a little bit too big on the model itself. The cookeries are not that big in real life. But suddenly, these guys turned into Gurkhas. Everyone can see. Oh, they're Gurkhas. They they've got the knives. That unit has got knives. That's that's the Gurkha unit, right? And you know what? Many people mold their Gurkhas with the soft slouch hats. Um, but you know what? In battle, they wore the, the exact same gear as all other British troops. The only difference was they had the cookeries, and they yes, they wore the slouch hats on some campaigns, but. Um, I have photo images showing that the Gurkhas actually charged in the Western Desert using just the regular British helmet. So that is my Gurkhas, built from the same box. Now, the final thing that I did with my box, I bought three of those. <laughs> my my whole collection of British is um, 
is three boxes of Perry's. Um, the final thing I've built, and that is because, um, well, I'm going to the WCC in a minute. Um, and that is I built myself some Indians. Again, same box. I wanted to be, make sure this time that I had miniatures that represented Indians. Why? Because I uh, I want to use a free Indian platoon, free, free Indian unit, manpower of the empire. Um, so what I did was I took a box of War Games Atlantic's Afghans and I, I took the heads and just mounted them on the regular bodies. And suddenly I have turbans because most of the Indian troops in the British Army didn't actually wear helmets, they wore turbans. So um, that's how I built my Indians. So that is the, that's the range of stuff you can actually do with that box set. That is very, very useful, isn't it? You can do so many different things um, depending on how you paint them and how you assemble them. So what I wanted to do now is I wanted to show you what I would do if I bought myself a new box of, of Perry miniatures. And we can just we can start out by going and seeing the, the the box. It's right here. I'll link down below in the description if you want to go and get yourself one of those. Um, I highly recommend this box. It's very very good. Thirty eight infantry plastic men. Um, some of them are. What well, there are two two downsides to this box. One of them is that the bases they don't come with the standard size one inch. Uh, base. Um, they have a smaller base, which sucks. So you're going to have to go and get yourself some different bases for your men. But you can overcome that. Um, and then some of them are lying down. Now the, those guys lying down, they, for some purposes, they're really good. Uh, I have my sniper lying down, for instance. Um, it's just a matter of, of you know, um, making the enemy forget that that he's even there. Um, I also have my light mortar lying down, um, but for standard infantry, I would rather have them standing on a base because that base is actually sometimes it does make a difference, he and, and stuff like that, right? So we have we have thirty eight men, but I think that you're going to like not use all thirty eight because you're not going to use all the guys lying down. So that is the only limitation, and then the limitation of what is actually in the pack. You can build all 38 of them with rifles. Um, there are uh, at least uh, one or two of them that have a, um, a radio, uh, and one of them who, who is an officer with a pistol. If you want to build that, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but So that is what we have to work with. Now... What does that give us? Well, in the pack itself, you can actually go and get yourself um, a um, an anti tank rifle. Um, and for two men, I, I don't see why not. The peer is not that great anyway. Um, so let's get ourselves an anti tank rifle. Um, you can also build yourself quite a few infantry squads, but we have, we are definitely going to build ourselves a lieutenant first. We're going to give him an SMG, not the pistol, even though we could. Uh, and then we're going to, like I did, build ourselves the free observer. So that is one, two, three, four, four men. Um, Right, and I'm going to stick with only the box. No kit bashing, no uh, anything fancy, just what's in the box. And from this, I am going to buy myself a sniper team because that's pretty pretty easy to build. Uh, the sniper doesn't really need the scope. You can just have him lying down and, and a spotter next to him with maybe the uh, binoculars. Right, so that is the sniper. We can also get ourselves a light mortar, which I think you should, because you can build that from the box as well. Again, lying down. Going inexperienced, there's no reason to go regular. Yes, they'll be a little bit more survivable, but they won't hit any better. Better, Right, so I'm just going to go inexperienced. The easiest and cheapest ones I can get. 
Right. Now, we can here, let's go. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight men. We've used eight men. Now we need to take the obligatory uh, sections here. And since I'm not going to be able to kit bash anything, I'm going to go and get myself an SAS section. Um, for me, a good SAS section is six men, and they are going to need submachine guns. Now, the SAS are really good, and they're a good push unit. Um, they don't have the size, though. Right, so that was one, two, six, eight, plus six. So we are at 14. Then we are going to get ourselves a good few regular infantry riflemen sections. Again, these are going to be our skirmishes. So I'm going to go and get ourselves six man units. We could get light machine guns. There are Bren guns in the pack, uh, in, in the Perry miniatures. Uh, look here, see, Bren gun. Anti-tank rifle. We're not going to build it though, because it's not worth it. So I'm going to get myself six regulars and another six regulars. It doesn't matter whether or not you take them early or mid-war here. They are exactly the same. And another six regulars. So that is 20, that is 32, 32 infantrymen, and that means that we have just enough for one more SAS section. There we go. 32, that's 38. Pling! And that is 551 points that you can build straight out from one box of Perry miniatures. 10 order dice, it's almost a full army, right? So the only thing you would have to add for this is you would have to add maybe a few trucks. Um, you could even go larger size on these SAS sections. Um, but uh, so so you could go eight man size. Um, that would make them harder. Um, and I think I would if, if if I was building this competitively. I would. Um, yeah. Maybe cut out the light mortar. Cut out the anti. Let's let's just do it. Let's set it up so that we get the most bang, the most competitiveness that we can. Right. Right. We're clearing this unit, and we're clearing. I, I think I got a little like <clears throat> seduced by the fact that I could build all this. I think you should just to have it, but it's not the it's not the best that you can go. Still stay sticking within the box. I think we want to push this to eight man, um, and we'll give a, give a few of them rifles. Um, so we're not we're not giving them extra rifles. We just um, because those rifles, you can use them if you have to skirmish, if you have to have range, like plink a few rifles, but going from that, you can sort of shift over and use the SMGs and the rifles can go as casualties. So that would be it. That would be my suggestion for what to build straight from the box here. That is what I would build. Um, second Lieutenant, inexperienced with an SMG, SAS section, we're going to need extra submachine guns. Um, no, there are a few. There are there are a good few submachine guns. You can actually do this, I think. Can't remember how many submachine guns are in the box. Can we actually see? Let's go and check it out. Right, here we have the sprue. We have one. One submachine gun there. Two. Oh, 
I see two on each sprue. Um, and that is for 12 men. So you'll have three, which means that you'll lack actually a few of those submachine guns. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. Mm, that, that wasn't that wasn't good. But you can see the, uh, the officer here. Uh, and if I remember correctly, you get two of those in each pack, which means an extra submachine gun as well. So that means if we have two submachine guns on the regular pack here, that is six submachine guns, plus two of these, that's eight submachine guns we get in the pack. Right. So we're possibly going to have to cut a few of these submachine guns uh, if we stay in within the pack, but you can build this straight out the pack, right? Um, just cut a few of these submachine guns if you need to, uh, and if and if you're just using one pack. Lieutenant, SAS, these are going to be our push units. Regular infantry, they are going to be our skirmishers, uh, forward observer. He is going to lay down a barrage before the SAS hit. Then another skirmisher unit here, and one more, and an SAS more. And then a sniper team. Um, so that's eight order dice, 569 points, which leaves us plenty of order dice uh, of points left for the rest. If I had to build out from this, uh, nope, that was not what I wanted to do. Ah, oh, sucks. Did it just save it? I don't know. Anyways, um, if I had to build out from that, I would get myself two uh, 15 CVT trucks because they can fit eight men. Um, and that would be perfect for the SAS, bringing them a little further up the, the board where they can be effectful on objectives or at the center board. Um, then I would get myself um, a, a steward, uh, the M3 Dakar version, of course. Um, and I'll get myself an armored car. Uh, possibly even, you know, three motorcycles um, because the the uh, early war motorcycles are just so useful. Um, so yeah, that that's what I would do going from there, and then get myself a howitzer as well, twenty five pounder, uh, um, a medium mortar, all that stuff, and then then you're good. Then you're good to go. Um, the only thing that the Brits are lacking then is a flamethrower, and, and you can get a flamethrower team for that, and a jeep. So um, that would be my suggestion for how to build a competitive army using, or starting with, the Perry Miniatures box. Good luck everyone. If anyone tries to do this, let me know how it went. Cheers.